In the previous video, we have finished implementing the AJCC graph, so now we can implement some logic in the AI director to create our graph. Now before we do that, I have introduced one bug into the AJCC graph script, so let's open it up and fix the bug. Ok, here is the script. If we slide it down, we are calling the add edge, and add edge calls add edge between. And here I have called the if statement and then I have forgotten to type else, so I'm going to type else. So now if this condition is true, it, this code will only run, else this code will run. Uh, otherwise we would add twice the same vertex as the uh, adjacent vertex to a vertex 1. Ok, let's save it, let's go back to Unity. Great! Now we will be able to go to our scripts AI folder and open the AI director and we will start creating our graph. Ok, great! We are in our AI director and currently we are not using here the adjacency graph. So what we are going to create is adjacency graph reference value at the top of our class. So let's type adjacency graph graph equals new adjacency graph. Now we are going to recreate this graph for each citizen, for each pedestrian, and we are going to find a path on this recreated graph. Now, to make it more efficient, what we could do is to create this graph after we place new road cells, so that we have this prepared graph and then we can also get the uh, path from one point to the other. Now, I, do not, I am not sure if this would be much more efficient, but we could certainly have this graph pre-created for all road cells, so for the whole line of roads, instead of having it recreated every time. But we are going to recreate it every time, so that's the idea. So now we have this graph, let's slide down, we are spawning all agents, and we are calling this try spawning an agent. And when we know that we have the path, and the path count is greater than zero, we are going to call list of vector 3, and let's call it agent path equals get pedestrian path. And we are going to pass to this method a path that we have received from our previous algorithm. Next, we are going to pass here the start position and the end position. We do not have this method, so all that are on it, and we can generate it. So it has all the parameters, that's why we have explicitly told it to return the list of vector 3s and not var. And now we have this method, so we can fill it in. So what we are going to do here is, first of all, we are not going to return anything in this video yet. So let's call return null. Above this return statement, we are going to call first graph.clear graph. Since we are going to recreate this graph, so we want to first clear it. Next, we are going to call create a graph method. And we are going to pass here the path that we have received. And let's alt enter on this method and generate it. And here we are going to implement this method in this video. So I have mentioned before that we are going to find the neighbor markers on the next road cell for uh, every open for connections uh, road uh, marker and we are going to connect those to create a graph between uh, each road cell. And I have mentioned that we will have issues with our corners, that's why we have implemented a logic for corners uh, to find the closest ver uh, marker differently. And I have also mentioned about the uh, four marker road prefabs like four way and three way where we will have an issue because we are receiving four different connections when we want to only have two connections, the closest connections between the markers and the destination. And what we are going to do is we are not going to uh, tackle that issue in the road helper class, but rather in this method, in this create a graph. So what we are going to do for our four way and three way, which has four markers, we are going to create a dictionary of type marker, so key will be the marker, and vector 3 will be the destination, and we are going to call it temp dictionary equals new dictionary. We are going to usually travel from the 3-way or 4-way 
to the next road prefab. And before we add those graph uh, markers from the four way and three way, we are going to add them to the dictionary, then sort them, and then add only the two with the closest distance between the markers so that we have the path to the next road cell. So what we are going to do here is we are going to call for loop and we are going to loop for each cell in our path, for each uh, position in our path. So i equals zero, i less than path dot count, i plus plus. And in this for loop, we are going to get reference to our road prefab. So what we are going to do is call var current position equal path of index i. Next, we are going to call var road structure equals, and we want to get the reference to our road prefab. So we are going to call placement manager get uh, structure at, and we are going to pass the current position. Now, this method will return to us a structure model. And in our setup, let's right click on it, go to the definition, and right click on the structure model and go to its definition. Great. So we have created this structure model class that will create us the model itself. And for road cells, we are going to swap the model depending on our uh, position of our uh, road. So if we recalculate the road by placing the road from one point to the other, there might be some changes to the prefab. And uh, instead of rotating the existing prefab, we are destroying the prefabs and re uh, recreating them depending on the correct rotation that it should have. If you want to know more, please see the previous tutorial about creating a simple city builder. In any case, there should be a link in the top right corner. In any case, that's how it works. So this structure model is on the parent of our road prefab or house or structure or special structure that will be the, its child. And now we would like to get the road helper reference so that we can get the references to the markers on our road prefabs. So the best idea would be to separate this by creating a child of this structure model for example the road structure model and create adding this method there and creating some methods to access the road helper now for the sake of time we are not going to do that but basically that would be the best idea so what we are going to do is assume that each structure model has the road helper and we are going to create a method here so let's type public vector 3 and we are going to have the methods that we have in our road helper. So first one will be get nearest marker to. And we are going to pass here the vector three, current position or maybe position simply. And we are going to call return. Since our child has uh, a root prefab, our child is a root prefab of this game object that has the structure model. We are going to call transform dot get child of index zero. We are going to call get component root helper, and thus we are going to be able to ac uh, to access this root helper script. And on this, we are going to call get closest pedestrian position, and we are going to pass here the position. So this will return us the closest position to the position that we passed to this method. So, so the closest marker position. Next. We are going to create public marker and we will want to have get pedestrian spawn marker. And we are going to again pass here the vector 3 position. And in this method, we are going to return again. Let's copy the statement to the child and to its root helper. And we are going to call here the get position for pedestrian to spawn. And we are going to pass here the position public list of markers let's call it get pedestrian markers and this method will simply return as the list of markers available uh, on our road prefab so return our transform get child zero so let's copy it from above and now we can call get all pedestrian markers and that will be it so this now will allow us to access the root helper and get the markers that we desire to get in order to create our graph. Okay, let's save it. 
and we can use Ctrl minus to go back until we reach uh, the AI director. So I'm going to go back, placement manager, and now I'm in the AI director. You can open it using the Unity or if you have it opened in the Visual Studio, we can do this as well. Okay, so what we can do is call var markers list equals our road structure, which is our structure model dot get pedestrian markers. And that's it. That's how we are going to access our markers. Okay, let's split this video in two because now we are going to create the whole logic for creating the graph and then we are going to be able to test them. So we are going to continue implementing this method in the next video.